uh, actually today, you know, uh, it, this this was a very talk that I was going, you know, I'm going to talk about, you know, the concept of sensei because sensei is also really important here to understand how actually the Islamic civilization uh, or in actually the vocabulary which was developed in the Islamic civilization is the most suitable vocabulary or most suitable method to understand East Syrian civilization. And today, my uh, title of my talk is Dao and Sayyid Suruk, East Asia and Islamic Civilization. And Dao, Dao is one of the most important concepts, not only in Japan, but also in China and Korea, Vietnam. You know, the East, you know, this is the most important keyword to understand the East Asian civilization. And the Sayyid Suruk, uh, Sayyid Suruk means like spiritual journey and also the spiritual training. And I believe you know, this is the, one of the most important keywords to understand the Ottoman spirituality or Ottoman like spiritual education. And uh, I don't know how many uh, attend uh, audiences today are actually students of Usul Academy, uh, but these uh, two major keywords that we always uh, you know, cherish, those are intellectual independence and open civilization. Now, but today I'm gonna talk about the uh, like a comparative perspective between East Asia and Islamic civilization. And people may think that, you know, I'm talking about the East Asian Islam because I'm East Asian. And this is wrong. And I have achieved this perspective because I study in Istanbul and the Hadors, the Hadors in English media. <laughs> and, but honestly, sorry, I, I'm speaking Turkish like in daily basis, so I'm sorry to forget my English. Right? But, uh, in the same, that this educational intercourse ESAR or even Houding University or Alliance and Civilization Institute, and now and Usul Academy, you know, those institutions actually helped me to achieve this perspective. Uh, uh, in fact, actually, you know, thanks for this Recep Sensei, you know, I have now uh, I have achieved this identity as the East Asian Muslim uh, who study like traditional uh, uh, traditional like Ottoman curriculum, and also like, you know, to, while preserving my East Asian heritage. And before talking about intellectual independence, uh, I would like to introduce one, uh, one interesting uh, paragraph from Ibn Khaldun's Mokaddima. He talks about the uh, captive mind of the, you know, the Muslim people uh, in, in his time when they were conquered by the uh, uh, Idlib uh, Christian or uh, the armies. So at that time, uh, those area, you know, the Muslim citizens were conquered by the Christians and those Muslims were started to assimilate themselves to the like a Christian way of thinking or the Christian way of like a living. And he said that reason for this is that the soul, you mean the, the nature of the human being always see perfection in the person who is superior to it and to whom it is subservient. And it considers him perfect, you mean the Christians, and either because it is impressed by respect it has, it has for him, or because it erroneously assumes that its own subservience to, for, to him is not due to the nature of defeat, but to the perfection of the victor. And if that erroneous assumption fixes itself in the soul, then it becomes a firm belief. The soul then adapts all the manuals of victor and assimilate itself to him. Then this is called uh, imitation. And this is the world of, you know, the, uh, the one of the most famous Islamic scholars who lived in the 14th century, the Ibn Haldun, but his interpretation or his explanation about the situation of the Muslim or situation of humans, actually it's also, this, uh, it's as if that depicting the situation of the Muslim right now as well. Well, not only the Muslim, or for example, like now I'm Japanese, but if I go to Japan, you know, uh, you can see that you know, the millions of Japanese are now celebrating the Halloween, uh, which uh, they don't believe it at all. And they're also celebrating the Christmas and uh, they are purchasing uh, and, and they are having, uh, and they're uh, holding an iPhone, communicating themselves. And now, uh, today, now I'm wearing this traditional uh, Japanese costume called kimono. Kimono means the Japanese traditional clothes. But if you go to Tokyo, like nobody's wearing kimono anymore. Like, you know, uh, the people are wearing the suits. So uh, this means that, uh, uh, like you know, the uh, the clothes or like way of living 
or even the language itself. This is not a neutral thing. It actually, the, every form of living is depicting who is the dominant, uh, the agent. And now uh, we are standing at the Usura Academy, and, the, uh, and I believe that we are all seeking ilm. But, uh, but while we're seeking ilm, we always have to take into consideration that you know, do we, uh, without achieving this intellectual independence, or without achieving so-called open civilization, uh, uh, that we cannot, uh, we can overcome, we'll overcome this kind of really Eurocentric like a mode of thinking or Eurocentric the mode of living, and 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 I think this is the you know, homework or the challenge of the old Muslim intellectuals or the old Muslim students right now that how can we keep our Muslim identity and not just like a universal concept of Muslim identity. For example, if I'm Asian, then how can I be the Muslim intellectual as Asians? Or how can uh, uh, how can like Turkish students can be the Muslim intellectual as the Turkish? So this universality and particularity is, is always an important keyword to say, uh, 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 when we are seeking it. And as I said, example like suit, suit is just you know, invented in France and it's uh, and it entered in, in England. So this this is actually like a local like a culture. But now that everyone who's ever in Japan. Like in Japan, like wearing suits is like a torture. Like it's so humid, that in summer it's so hot, and in the winter it's so cold. And actually, this is uh, this clothes is not suitable for like you know, uh, the, the Asian environment. But we feel that we are obliged to wear suits uh, which we go to the public spaces. But and we also see the suits is like a universal like a form of clothes. And right now, today in my talk, I'm using Zoom, like so technology in Zoom and Google Slides. And these are not from like Japan. And for example, like if Zoom and Google slides, like, I don't know, if they may decide that they only uh, give this technology to the American citizens, then we cannot even continue this talk right now. So this is also, uh, this shows that actually we, uh, uh, that the thinking intellect, thinking independency, where like being independent, it's not just like a, uh, like a philosophical, like, uh, like a problem. And actually, this is, we are all living in so-called like enslaved environment, and we all need to think that how can we create a real so-called like Islamic environment? That I'm not saying that you know, don't use Zoom, that don't use Google Sites, but you know the, this is just a good example. And another thing, and another good example is called English. Remember, today I'm I'm talking English as a lingua franca, but. Uh, <clears throat> But English is also like not not the neutral uh, like languages. Uh, this is just a tool, but this tool is also have its uh, historical context and also the cultural backgrounds. And in, uh, before the talk, for example, like uh, Lejeb Hoja used the word called sensei, like sensei. And how and sensei means not it, it doesn't mean only teacher, but it also means like spiritual master. And it also means like those uh, like uh, like close friends, so it contains a lot of meaning. But uh, but English, if I say like a teacher Rejab or Rejab teacher or Sir Rejab, like you know, it gives like a different. It, it doesn't uh, keep the flavor of the word like a sensei. So <clears throat> and this is what uh, is important to think about open civilizations. Like in you know, one language cannot covers everything. That's why in Usul Academy, we also, uh, we studying like a classical Arabic uh, vocabulary uh, to uh, download the whole package of the, of the Islamic, uh, like, uh, Islamic educational system. But today, I also want to explain uh, that this Arabic can be the also really uh, useful tool to understand East Asia as well. For example, like in Naruto, like have you ever watched like Japanese animation? I don't know, uh, is there any young students? No. But this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's called Naruto, it's a Japanese animation. And in this Japanese animation, I told you that there's a character called Kakashi Sensei, like Kakashi Sensei. And, and I watched the English subtitles. And in this English subtitles, they also, they, also uh, they didn't translate this word Sensei. They, they didn't say like, you know, the teacher Kakashi or like a master kakashi is sensei. And as I said, how can we translate this word sensei? Or another one, because sensei is not some, uh, not kind of like, you know, the perfect 
uh, figure who teaches the truth to the student, actually the sensei and the students are completing each other. So in the, in the animation of Naruto, the sensei, the teacher themselves is exposed to uh, their, uh, uh, their weaknesses and the students uh, accept it. And they try to complete each other to see the school perfection. <clears throat> and another word is called Kung Fu. Kung Fu is originally a Chinese word, but if we say like Kung Fu, I'm sure like the almost uh, everyone thinks that this Kung Fu means like a martial arts, like a Kung Fu pandas, like a Kung Fu. But uh, this is also like a wrong translation. Like Kung Fu has a much, much a deeper meaning of it. Another example, example, like if the Kung Fu is martial arts, like in Chinese, it's, uh, we call tea ceremony as the Kung Fu Chada. The Chada means like tea ceremony. And if it is martial arts, then what is the meaning of the martial tea ceremony? Like beating everyone's up like with, uh, while serving the tea? Of course not. And Cha here, Cha means called Chai, means tea, and Dao uh, means uh, like a path. Or, so pass of tea, like martial arts person tea also doesn't make any sense. So this shows that the kung fu has another kind of meaning. And actually the kung gong fu means riada. So this is how the classical Islamic scholar uh, in China interpret the gong fu. Like these are Arabic translation uh, uh, <coughs> of the, the Chinese terminology. And also the, this, uh, these are like dictionary, like in you know, a Chinese Arabic dictionary to explain uh, like a Chinese terminology in the Arabic. And they say like, you know, Gong as a Riyada or Tarabiyat and Nafs. And another important key is like Said or Suluk, like Suluk. So these examples shows that just uh, knowing one language is not enough. Like, if you only know the Kung Fu as a martial arts, you never know like, you know, the real spirituality of the East Asian civilization. But if you know another languages, for example, Arabic, and uh, more to say, if you know the, uh, the Chinese Islamic heritage, then you can find like a spiritual bridge or spiritual connection between East Asia and the Islamic civilization. And as I said, uh, now in the Muslim academia, we always uh, we tend to compare like Islam with uh, Islam with like Western norms, like Islam and Hegel, or Islam and Kant, or Islam and human rights, or Islam and the banking system, or Islam and credit currencies. But uh, as East Asian, like an, uh, I want to ask, like do religion or culture or concept that cannot be translated into Western world, we have no values. For example, this called like Kung Fu or the Sensei. Like those things, like uh, has a much deeper meaning than martial arts or like you know the tea teacher. But but uh, in, if we look about like, you know, current Islamic scholarship, the, there's so few uh, studies which uh, works on with about Islam and East Asia or Islam and Buddhism or Islam and Kung Fu or Islam and and the Tao philosophy and. Uh, there is no worth, worth of it. I don't think. Uh, I don't think so because uh, is, uh, like Islam in China is actually the one of the oldest uh, the culture in Islamic civilization. Example, <clears throat> and when it comes to civilizational perspective, there is a book called Osan Kurd Islam. is written by the Vince uh, Vincent Mansour Monte. is the French Orientalist. He French Muslim Orientalist like a converts, and he listed these five cultural diversity and Islamic civilization. The first is Arab, and second is Turk, and third is Perso India culture, and the fourth is Malay Indonesia culture, and fifth is Africa. And again, this Mansa Montiel ignore the, actually the fifth colors of Islam, which is China. And now, uh, <clears throat> and inshallah, maybe if we can flourish the Islamic culture in Japan as well. But, uh, but this is the future, but we must not forget that this China has the historical heritage of the Islamic culture, but it's, uh, but both Orientalists, uh, even uh, we Muslim as well, we are forgetting this uh, uh, the history. And one of the interesting about this Sino civilization, you mean the Chinese or Indonesian civilization, is that they are using their original character. It's called Chinese character, 
in Japanese we call kanji, in Chinese we call hanzu. And these Islamic scholar, uh, they are the master of the Arabic and the Persian and the Chinese character. And some of the scholars, they, they wrote their work in Arabic and some of them in Persian. But the most importantly, that they have deeply studied Islamic classic, which is written by Arabic and Persian, and they translated into Chinese character. And this Chinese Islamic classic uh, is actually the uh, contribute to the East Asian civilization, not only to build the Islamic culture, but the so-called like Chinese character. So they are the contributor of the East Asian civilization. And as I said, this Chinese Islamic tradition is somewhat now forgotten in these days, but there is a legend uh, that the Sahaba reached to the China and he is the one who spread the Islam. And, and as a historic record, we can find that even like 12th century or 13th century, uh, there is a big Muslim community there. So uh, in, this, uh, in this perspective, we can say the Chinese Islamic culture is the one of the oldest like Islamic civilization, at least it's not new. Is one of the oldest uh, uh, like heritage in the Islamic civilization. So this is one of the Chinese uh, Chinese uh, mosque, like dummy, <laughs> and the style is style is completely look like Chinese uh, like a Chinese style, but this was the mosque. So this shows that should the Islam is completely uh, established its root in the East Asian civilization, and. If I keep like a Chinese Islamic civilization or Chinese way of like, Islamic thinking, that like, uh, some people might think that this is one of the so-called like exotic like phenomenon of the Islamic civilization, and, like just like a localized like a version of Islam. But I want to ask one thing. For example, like you know, Farabi is a Madinat Fadira. Like everybody knows that Farabi is the one who re-found uh, uh, the uh, the. Uh, values of like a Greek philosophy or Platonic philosophy and he used this vocabulary uh, to develop like Islamic uh, Islamic philosophy or Islamic uh, or the Kalam but but it means like this Farabi was influenced by the like, Greek way of thinking and the Chinese civilization they are just you know uh, they just walk the different paths so these Muslim scholars like instead of like Plato or, Arist or Aristoteles like he, uh, they read deeply on like a Confucianist classics or like a Taoist classic or Buddhism classic, and they use this vocabulary to explain the Islam while preserving the philosophy of Tawhid. So in this way, like this uh, Islamic philosophy who, who observed like a Greek way of, uh, 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 of thinking, and also like Islamic uh, heritage who install this Confucianistic or the Buddhism or the Taoist way of thinking is like a twins, like who share the same root as Tawhid, but they just, just you know, establish their own way of explaining Islam or preaching Islam, like according to uh, the audiences. You know, there's a famous like hadith, like to have this nas ara kadri So, like, for example, like if you talk like private philosophy to the Japanese, uh, like a classical Japanese, like a citizen, like it, it, uh, like it won't make sense. But if you, you can use like this Buddhism way of vocabulary or the uh, or the Gdaoist way of the way of thinking to the East Asian people, like you know, it helped them to think that, it, that Islam is the closer to their like uh, their heritage. And furthermore, they think that Islam is the true perfection uh, of the East Asian philosophy. And so this Islam, Chinese Islamic tradition can be called that this is uh, like, a uh, like a child of the Islamic civilization and the Chinese civilization. And today, uh, uh, you can forget the, every, uh, the, uh, the Muslim thing that I said, but just remember this one word, like Han Kitab. So this Han Kitab is the most important keyword uh, to understand the Chinese Islamic civilization. This Han means Chinese and Kitab means kitab. And this is, uh, this is a really interesting uh, thing about Islamic civilization. Like, no, uh, no matter where you go, for example, in Turkey or in Africa or in China or Malaysia, like kitab, you know, the book is always called kitab. And this clearly showed that how Islamic civilization cherished the values of idem. Because this kitab, the book, uh, 
so they always cherish you know, the book and, and, and the knowledge that, that they can learn from the book. So this kitab, so uh, I always encourage the students, like, you know, the, uh, for example, if you visit like a Muslim community, like, you know, ask how they call like a kitab, uh, like a book. And usually, actually, the, almost 100% uh, that if you go to Muslim community, a Muslim community in Africa or China or everywhere, like a book is always called like a kitab. So this Han kitab is kind of symbol of the uh, like a, a intellectual power of the Chinese Islamic, uh, Islamic tra tradition. So, uh, so this Han kitab uh, is the Islamic classic, which is usually written in the Chinese character, but. Uh, for example, this uh, <clears throat> this one is the most uh, famous like a book written by Liu Zi, a 17th century scholar who lived in China. Uh, but Han Kitab is not necessarily written in China uh, in Chinese character as well. For example, this one is the Arabic translation of the uh, of the Liu Zi's book. So uh, this one, uh, I'm reading the scholar name is scholar uh, Ma Liuan Yuan. So there's a Chinese uh, Islamic scholar called Ma Liuan who lived in the 20th century. And at that time, there was a revolt uh, among the Muslim community against the uh, Chinese authority. And because of that, uh, this Muslim community uh, uh, had like severe damage. And in order to preserve the Islamic heritage, this Ma Liuan uh, brought this book to the Bombay, you know, the, the city of South Asia, and he translated this uses book into Arabic, and the copy of the original text was uh, pub, uh, uh, published in Bombay, and it spread to all over the world. And even one of the uh, the copies are rich in Japan as well. And in this page, for example, uh, this Liuzi is explaining uh, the how can we understand like you know the creation of Allah uh, by using the, ch uh, the Chinese concept. And you know this is one of uh, I think the famous like symbol of the Tai Chi like yin yang like you know the symbol, and uh, in in here the, he is explaining that Allah is the one who uh, uh, creates the whole uh, uh, the two opposing element uh, in the world, and he is the one who makes the two opposing element to create the whole creature like Mahuruka. And this beauty. Uh, he also wrote another book called Tian Huan Lian Li. And he said, oh, and, oh, pardon. Right. And he is explaining uh, interesting about the ibadat, you know, ibadat of the, uh, of the Islam. And this, this word is pronounced gone. And then we're coming back to the, uh, coming back to the uh, previous topic, like gone food. And actually the ku, uh, so he said that this ibadah is the, not gong fu, but gong fu and ibadah has the same meaning, like achieving the real, uh, the real energy from the divine, uh, divine presence. And he said these five pillars of Islam, like salat or zakat or psalm, is a method uh, to perfecting the Tao. And, and this, is, this ibadah is the method to reach the unification of the divine and the human being. And this unification doesn't mean like in the Ittihad or like Ibn Arabi. It means like, you know, you uh, the, clearly understand the true message from the divine being called Allah. And another important, this is a little bit off topic, but another in, uh, important thing is that, for example, uh, I cannot pronounce, well, uh, if, I, uh, if I check the dictionary, I, I can, uh, but in general, I cannot pronounce uh, the like a classical Chinese text but Japanese can read the classical Chinese text because we, we share the same Chinese character. And in elementary school and junior high school, the Japanese studied the uh, classical Chinese as the uh, like obligatory classes. So uh, we also read the Confucian text or the Taoist or Buddhist text from China. And if I, when I encountered this text, you know, I got shocked because this Chinese Islamic text, it looks like, uh, you know, one classical Jap, it's like a text which is written by like a classical Japanese samurai because they all use the same vocabulary. But here I can feel the presence of Tawhid 
or I can feel the presence of Allah. Like no matter how I can deeply read like a text of a Japanese classical text, you know, Japan has no history uh, with the monotheism. So I always feel some kind of like emptiness, but here, like, uh, thanks for this text, I feel that, you know, uh, there is a tradition of, you know, Tawhid in Eastern civilization. And if I can truly sincerely read those texts, I can establish like identity as the East Asian, like Muslim intellectual. And remember this in Chinese called Shudao and Japanese called Shudo, and Shudo means completing the Tao. Like this Tao means like, tari, uh, like Sharia and Tariqa and Hakika. This is the path. This is the path which help you or lead, uh, help you to uh, reach the, to the Hakika of the Allah. And here, this is also the writings of the Busey. He said that this Shudo or the Ibadah or Allah is the method of Uruj. Uruj means ascension. It means the spiritual elevate yourself to reach the, the Hakika. And again, he using the you know uh, like a the uh, that's the picture of the yin yang theory. So this is how they try to struggle to uh, create so called like a Chinese Islamic tradition. And if, and I and I and I can, we can say that this shootout can be translated into like a sayru sru in Arabic, like you know, uh, like spiritually training yourself uh, to walk on spiritual path to reach to the hakika. And Another important thing that we can learn from this Chinese East Asian tradition uh, is that they are not just being apologetic, like, or they are not just saying that you know Islam and Chinese tradition is the same. So you know, it's, uh, so just be relaxed, don't be afraid. Like we are friends of you know the East Asian. Uh, so for example, like this uh, Jin Tianzhu, uh, he is another Islamist scholar. He wrote a book called uh, called like a Kinjin Shiye. So this is in a clearing the doubts about the Islam. So at, in, uh, when he was lived, there was there was so many prejudice against Muslim, like why they eat in different tree and why their clothes are different and why their method of janaza, you know, funerals are different. Like in general, uh, there are so many questions that you know why Muslims are different from Chinese, and this. Uh, uh, Master Jin, he wrote this book uh, to clear all these kind of like doubts or the prejudice against the Muslim. And uh, what is interesting about the book is, as I said, he not just being apologetic, but he said Islam is not different from the Chinese uh, Chinese philosophy or East Asian civilization, but actually Islam is the one who completes the philosophy of the East Asian civilization. And he used another uh, he used this keyword as like a Dao. And he said, Islam is the best method to perform uh, this complete, uh, complete in the Tao, is like suluk. And he said, the, you know, uh, and he said that this uh, Tao of Islam has two methods. The one is the Tao of humanity, and second is the Tao of divinity. And Tao of humanity is trying to create uh, like a proper relationship uh, between like a father, uh, the parents and the children, or the wife and the husband, or the ruler and the ruled, or like brother, uh, and, uh, the older brother, the elder brother, and the younger brother, or sensei and the students. So he said that this Islam is the best, uh, is no, uh, Islam knows the best like a method to complete these two opposing elements, like you know, the teacher and the students and so on. And, but this is not the end, like he said, but most importantly, the Islam is the best method to serve the divinity. He said, uh, he called like a Tao of divinity, like in you know, the Tian and, and thanks for this two vehicle, like you know, the Islam is the, like, uh, is the best, sorry, Islam offers us like you know the uh, like a perspective to understand both like uh, East Asian civilization and also like a monotheistic tradition. And this is the word. Uh, this is the one the poem which is written by the Liu Zi, the Chinese Islamic scholar. He said, uh, <clears throat> he said like visit uh, visit sensei and seek his protection, and and pass the uh, like spiritual makamat, like spiritual process, 
and you will gain the true opportunity. So here, here it says like in the uh, like renowned like a shape, and this is called like uh, this can be translated into the sensei in Japanese because we we also use this word. That this means like spiritual master who completes you, and also this spiritual master will be completed like same for the, uh, the students, and <coughs> and this blackness it means like it means like spiritual. Uh, uh, like uh, so it means this means spiritual gate, but this means also means like a black. And if you uh, watch like a Japanese samurai movie or uh, like a classical or the some like animations or like a video game which depicts the traditional like a Japanese life living, uh, you will notice that you know the, usually the, Jap the Japanese wear so called like a black color like a kimono like like me. And this, actually this blackness is a symbol of the spirituality. And uh, so in this way, this we when you read the Islamic poem of the Duzi, we cannot only uh, uh, in addition to uh, to know uh, the the like, historical heritage of the Chinese uh, Chinese Islamic civilization, this will be like introduction, uh, the best introduction to the East Asian civilization. And as I said. Like there is no like a proper uh, translation sense in English, but if you read this Chinese Islamic text, it shows that you know, Islamic civilization knows, or well, Islamic civilization knows like a proper way of the translating the Islam East Asian uh, tradition. And right now in Istanbul, that I'm doing well, one of the project called like tea, the Istanbul like in Japanese tea ceremony project, and this tea ceremony is. Like in English, we call uh, it is called like tea ceremony, and but there is no word ceremony in this word. Because as I said, this cha or sa means tea, and do means dao. It means like dao of tea. Like this is not like a tea party. Like you know, I'm not doing doing this for celebrating some my birthday or something. So this is what the, the uh, Jin Tianzu call the dao of humanity. So. Like, I'm not doing this tea ceremony like you know instead of like my, instead of like salad or some. So this is in the mindset of the East Asian Islamic scholar. So this is the method of the Tao of humanity. Is that this is the method that you will learn the how you uh, show respect to the masters or how you, uh, how you keep the sabr uh, in the difficulties or how you treat so called like tea set. So this is not to so this respect. It, it must be shown to the uh, like a master, but also in addition to it, in the respect must be shown to the uh, like a T2 as well, because uh, we believe this each of the Tito's, uh, Tito is, has its own spirit and they want to make a ibadah for the sun divinity. And as we, as Muslim intellectual, we can interpret uh, this two as they want, uh, uh, we can interpret that these two is want to make a like a show the gratitude towards Allah. And another thing is that in, in, in Turkey, I'm introducing this Japanese manga, not just like in you know, a Japanese or exotic entertainment. It's actually this manga is the Japanese Seiru Suruk literature. Why? Because uh, <clears throat> if you watch those Japanese mangas animation, uh, you will always find there is always a master and students. Like Iruka Sensei and Naruto, or uh, this Sensei uh, is in Whole Metal Alchemist. The story is how it looks the European, but the the message is so is so like East Asian. It's to is always mean a master and and students and also the importance of Tauba or importance of endurance in a suburb. So this is now the one of the most popular manga or animation in Japan. It's called Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. And this is cavity is called Zen Itsu. And Zen Itsu also have the master. And the master is told, uh, uh, so this is, uh, so master is saying, uh, is teaching uh, how to spiritually elevate uh, uh, ourselves. And he's saying, do you know how to refine your soul? Refine the katana. Do you know how to make katana? And he said, if you want to make katana, you will beat it and beat it and beat it and try to extract the uh, like unpure thing, and you and you will strengthen the purity of the metal, and then you will and then you can gain your strong 
through katana. And this is actually the metaphor of the human being. Like this kata, uh, like human being is also like a katana. You will beat yourself and beat yourself, beat yourself, you know, riada or tarabiyat and nafs. And you will try to tah, uh, make tahriya, like extra your bad qualities and observe the good qualities in the guidance of Allah and Prophet. And so, of course, Himes Niyava, that is not written by the Muslim author, but there is uh, so many messages that, that Share the same message, uh, share the same values between Islamic civilization and East Asian civilization. That all we have to do is just acquire the proper method or proper perspective uh, to read those manga texts. Uh, and another thing is that. Uh, <coughs> that now I'm talking about the like, importance of preserving the uh, tradition or importance of preserving uh, like a, a East Asian heritage, but this cannot be like in the, uh, conducted in just like academic basis only. For example, I have a design, this pan in Kyoto, and here it's, uh, I put the poem of the Chinese Islamist cover. And, I found this poem from the uh, like a mani uh, digital manuscript uh, in Japanese library, and not just publishing this as a, like a book. You know, I always wanted to carry, you know, the messages of the Islamic scholar. So, so I just made a uh, like a critical. Uh, uh, I just wrote a critical text, you know, tahki, and I put it on this yapa, uh, pause, you know, fan, and oh, and I'm now I'm always carrying it. Like no, no way I like. Uh, no matter where I go. And this is actually the traditional life of the Japanese uh, Japanese scholar as well. For example, you know, the students of tea ceremony, they always carry the, you know, the fan, uh, which is the uh, poem of the tea master uh, were written, uh, written on it. And I'm, and I'm applying this method to create a new East Asian like Islamic culture. And another one is like, you know, not, uh, I have a colleague Erveda Unal, yes, she's a Turkish citizen who studied at the Peking University. And now we are translating the chi classical Chinese Islamic text into Turkish. Because as I said, you know, uh, as the Muslim intellectual, the most important thing is that you know be uh, acquiring this open civilization perspective. And now and uh, and uh, I frequently encounter the situation that when I introduce some of the classic of the East Asia or Japan, you know, Turkish student ask me that is there English translation, in English translation, because I want to study from that. And, and this question is from the Turkish uh, students, like, like, and they're asking the English translation. And of course, I don't know if there's English translation or not because I'm Japanese, but, and I always think the students like, before asking English translation, just at least ask me, is there a Turkish translation? Because uh, of course there is a translation, at least there is some kind of challenge, uh, you know, the, uh, and if there is no Turkish translation, we should translate into Turkish translation. And as I said, Turkish is also have lots of Arabic and Persian vocabulary because its cultural background is Islamic civilization. And I believe that Turkish translation is much, much, would be much, much proper than the English translation because I read the hundreds of these, you know, this Dao of tea text, but all of the English translation, they say the tea ceremony, that they, they, they depict in this tea ceremony as like a, tea, a Dao of tea as a tea party. But in Turkish, we can just say like a chai yoru, like sato, Dao of tea, pass of tea. And, you know, this seiru suruk or the sabr or the ikhras of futuba, you know, these, are, uh, these words can be, uh, are used in the Turkish languages as well. That's why. Yeah. We must not forget the spiritual richness of the uh, languages uh, which were developed in the Islamic civilization. And, and one of the reasons I, uh, I, ha I have acquired this perspective is saying for so called like Rejab Shensei, because he asked me to translate the book of Hutuwa. This uh, is written by the Abu 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 Rahman Sulami. And this is one of the oldest books on the uh, Islamic chivalry, you know, Islamic hutuwa. And when I read the original Arabic text, you know, I got shocked, even though it's not written in Chinese or Japanese or Korean, because these messages are also uh, as if 
like you know Japanese samurai are talking to me. Like today, I'm just show uh, I just showed the example of the East Asian civilization, but even uh, uh, this was not limited in the East Asian vocabulary. You know these Arabic vocabularies or Arabic con concept or the Islamic concept itself is actually they share lots of share uh, a same like spiritual ground between Islamic civilization and and I believe that this. Uh, process would be really helpful for Japanese to know about Islam because, as I said, you know the uh, uh, the not only the, uh, like Westerners but Japanese also think that Islam is something uh, something away from them. You know, uh, some the uh, they believe that Muslims are like you know alien. Alien means like you know outside of their own culture, and they think that Islam is something. Uh, which they can understand, but it's not. Like if you see like a Chinese or Malaysia, Indonesia, actually the Muslims are the neighbor. And and if we look at civilizational perspective, actually Muslim as is a neighbor in the same civilization. And and if you know, uh, and if we can study like uh, the Islam sincerely, then we can further know that actually the Islamic text which written in like Malay, language of Malay or the Arabic or the Persian Turkey, you know, they all share the same spirituality which the Japanese mongers are talking about. And so this is just an introductory talk, but inshallah, if I have a next time, you know, I would like to uh, detail explain that what kind, of, uh, what kind of key concept or the messages, you know, can be helpful uh, uh, to build the spiritual bridge between like Japanese civilization and Islamic civilization. Also, thank you very much for, for listening. Uh, this is all my talk. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kayim Sansei. Uh, this was very interesting uh, talk. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, only very few people in the world can make such uh, comparisons and such uh, connections. Uh, you know, uh, there are very few people who are familiar with the Chinese, Japanese and Islamic uh, cultures uh, who can make, you know, these kind of uh, connections. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is a long rooted uh, Islamic culture in uh, China and uh, you are basing the Japanese Islamic culture on that uh, tradition. This is really very uh, interesting and we would like to hear more and learn more uh, about that uh, tradition because it's one of the most understudied or completely neglected, you know, uh, uh, Islamic cultures uh, uh, in the world. Uh, uh, and even like uh, Mansur Vincent, you know, did not list the Chinese Islamic culture as part of the five colors uh, of Islam. Uh, I believe that uh, through your work, uh, both the Muslim world and the non-Muslim world will come to know that uh, sixth color uh, of Islam, you know, originating from uh, China and uh, Japan.